This is a Sony PCM3324 reel to reel tape recorder. It runs up to 14 inch reels, half inch tape, has 24 heads which record a digital signal on the tape. Uh, came to the standard as PCM audio through to a control panel which would be located in another room. The machine and the controller usually weren't in the same room. A VU meter bridge above the meters, above the controller. There is a computer attached, though I'm having problems getting it to interface properly. Going through to a Beringer mixing desk. Then for demonstration purposes, mastering down to a two-track Mitsubishi digital reel-to-reel. I queue up the Mitsubishi. Now really on the digital tape you don't really want to be using the beginning because usually there's a lot of errors at the beginning of the tape. You set the counter, put this machine into record. Press play on here. little green flashing light to the top represents what's called a CRC error or cyclonic redundancy check. The left hand side VU meter isn't working. We'll stop that there uh, to save tension on the motors. If you press stop on the machine, hold it down, it unloads the machine. Back to the Mitsubishi. Nothing on the left hand channel. But as we can see here, it's replaying the digital side of it. If we go to the Q tracks, though. Now you don't use a cue track for replay, you use it for edit only. The Pro Digi is a different kind of format to the Dash machines. It's a Mitsubishi format only, I believe it's not compatible with older or newer machines. The Sony's tapes will work with the A series, S series and HR series. The PCM 3402, or this one which is the prototype, is compatible with the uh, earlier models, the 3202, and it's also compatible with the Studer D820X. PCM 3302, which is compatible with the D820X, uh, currently both machines here are not working. This one has an audio problem where uh, the output stage audio is inverted. It inverts the 180 degrees, 0 to 180 degrees and 180 degrees to 360 degrees to the pl uh, plus and minus rails. Uh, in effect when you put a sine wave in you get a square wave out with a sine wave superimposed upside down. And the Sony's not working because some people may remember my videos of the capacitor issues that we have on these. I've ordered 
a lot of capacitors. There's a few that I have replaced so far. There's quite a lot to go. Each board needs to be taken out, recapped, and then put back in again. And there's no guarantee the machine will run then, but there's a le less of a chance of it blowing any more boards. I was a little bit concerned since the LED lights are powered by the are powered pre the digital to analog converter. I thought well maybe there might be a problem there, as in the digital to analog converter is burnt out. So I traced back the electronics back to the last op amp, and there's nothing on the left-hand channel and signal on the right. Then I checked the output of the analog to digital converter. On this machine, there is only one analog output, which I thought was a bit odd. It's also got an MUX output. So I had a look at the MUX first, and that was fine. There was what looked like to be an audio signal. Then I had a look at this. Now, it looks like the audio signal, but what you can't see is it's sort of like um, pixelated. If I speed up the time, camera can focus. You could probably just make out that it's actually little blocks. And what it actually is, if I turn down the left hand channel, both channels are coming out the same output. Now that might look like as if it's the lower track of the oscilloscope, but as you can see here, there's only one wire plugged in. And if I put the two channels on, now I've got three. So that proves that the analog to digital, sorry, the digital analog converter is working. But sometimes, you tackle a machine as complicated as this with too much thought. I traced a signal out of this, which was the two stereo superimposed multiplex signals. Actually, a digital to analog converter there. In the back, which you can't really see. Down at the very back here is the beginning of the audio op-amp stage. But then I notice at the very beginning here, two ICs. And these ICs, PCM, uh, PCM56Ps, I thought, well, there's two of those. One of the channels is dead. What the hell? Swap them over. And sure enough, the right-hand channel's now dead. Problem solved by just swapping a chip.